The Minnesota Timberwolves are elite. There, I said it. I'll admit, two years ago when the Timberwolves gave up more than France did in the Louisiana Purchase to acquire a player who just got torched by Terrence Mann in an elimination game, I 100% thought they were about to waste the prime of another great player. Two years later though, they proved me wrong. Rudy Gobert has fit seamlessly into the Minnesota Timberwolves roster, propelling them from a middling defense and overall team to the number one defense in the league and a team in the running for the number one seed in a deep Western Conference. This number one defense combined with the ascent of Michael Jordan's lost air has had the Minnesota Timberwolves in championship contention talks for the first time since the iPhone was invented. Championship contention talks that have caused me, your friendly neighborhood sweatshop manager, to put on his regulation hater cap real quick and say, hey, pump the brakes real quick, pal. The Minnesota Timberwolves are awesome, but I'm not quite sure if they are a championship contender. And that's because when the playoffs roll around, one of their big dogs turns into a real p Real quick, if you are one of our 1,000 subscribers from the bottom of our heart, thank you. There was no universe in which we thought it was at all possible we were going to reach this goal this fast. And the only reason we were able to do it is because y'all decided to take a chance on us and we can't thank you enough for it. If you are not one of our 1,000 subscribers, please watch this video all the way through. And if you enjoy it, go ahead and like and subscribe. We got a lot of cool stuff coming in the near future. And for both groups of people, both those who are subscribed and those those who are not, stay tuned for the end of the video for a few announcements on what we have planned for the future of the channel. Commence the Anthony Edwards glazing. I mean, what do you want me to say? Anthony Edwards, the savior of dark skin basketball is here and he's him. I'll admit it was looking a little bit rough for us. LeBron and KD old as dirt. Jimmy Butler's game is as appealing as a rock in a lake and John Morant trying to break the world record speed run for how quickly you can lose all your sponsorships. But in our darkest hour, all puns intended, that sexy ass brother in OKC and this man right here have stepped up to the plate. Pretty much since his rookie season, Anthony Edwards has been flirting with superstardom. We've seen flashes of it here and there. We've seen the absurd athleticism and the defensive potential, but it hasn't been until this year that it's all come together. And you know how he did it? You know how he finally fulfilled his potential to become one of the best shot creators in the league? Well, your first assumption is probably that, oh, he's just taking more shots. And you would be correct, except for the fact that you'd be wrong. Anthony Edwards is scoring two more points a game on less shots than he was taking last year. Oh, okay, so his efficiency increased. That must mean he finally upgraded his three-point shot. Yes, his three-point shot efficiency is better than it was last year, but he is actually taking and making less three-pointers than his last season. Oh, so he got better at finishing. Again, yes, but again, his number of finishes at the rim has significantly decreased compared to last season. So if he is making less shots at the rim and at the three-point line, then how has he become so much more efficient, ladies and gentlemen? In the year of our Lord 2024, Anthony Edwards has become a more efficient scorer by switching out threes and dunks for mid-range shots. You cannot make this stuff up. Daryl Morey will never get another front office job again. Which is a dumb joke to make because he has a job right now, but that's not the point. And I mean, these ain't no one-two dribble pull-ups. This is actual poetry in motion. I mean, just watch these clips and tell me this man ain't bring a tear to your eye. Behind the back, snatch, hezzy, half spin, fake into the fadeaway. On Andrew Wiggins, nah, you're done. I'm, I'm sorry, you're done, one second. My goal! My goal! Come get your son! Come get your son right now! Now this man's string and dribble moves together like he in 2K. And even in 2K, that wouldn't work because his stamina bar would have been drained. Anthony Edwards is him. And even though it is a small sample size, he's shown that he ups his hymnness in the playoffs. In the two seasons Anthony Edwards has been in the playoffs, he has significantly increased his points per game and his efficiency, while also decreasing his turnovers per game. Now, you guys will get my updated top 25 players soon enough, but best believe that Anthony will be in that upper echelon. I had some very minor questions about Anthony Edwards, the number one option, but he has answered those questions and then some time after time after time. Anthony Edwards is more than good enough to lead a team on a playoff run and what that team has oh only like the best defense in the league 
Then I start getting a little bit excited. Rudy Gobert has turned this team into a defensive juggernaut. The number one defense in the league by a wide margin. The difference between them and number two is the same as the difference between number two and number 10. And unlike the number one defense is Rudy Gobert led in Utah, I believe this defense will be playoff proof because they have this one thing called, oh, um, one second, I have it here in my notes. Ah, uh, here, other good defenders. I'm sorry. I know I made this joke earlier about him getting torched by Terrence Mann, but I don't think Phil Swift himself could have held together a defense where the only two plus perimeter defenders are Royce O'Neal and Mike Conley. So now you extract Rudy Gobert and Mike Conley, who is a solid team defender himself, out of that defensive wasteland and you insert them into a roster with Jaden McDaniels, one of the most versatile and talented perimeter defenders in the league, Anthony Edwards, who has finally decided to start consistently trying on defense and has has thus become a very good perimeter defender himself and a bench rife with really solid defenders. Put that all together and you get the number one defense in the league and a defense that I think is going to be a real struggle for teams in the Western Conference to overcome. The issue is though, I think it's going to be a bit too easy for other teams to game plan for the Timberwolves offense. They're just a bit too ant-centric for me. If it's not an ant iso or an ant pick and roll or an ant post up, they ain't really doing much. And I'm worried that when ant gets double teamed in the playoffs or when he has an off game, there isn't really anyone else on the team that the Wolves can rely on offensively. If Rudy Gobert doesn't get his table set for him, his bib tucked in, his silverware on the correct side of the plate and literally spoon fed, then he ain't gonna eat. He's as big of a non-factor as you can be on the offensive end as an athletic seven footer. Conley is a good playmaker, don't get me wrong he's definitely a plus on offense but i don't know if he's an offensive floor raiser at this stage in his career he'll make a good offense better but i don't know if he's gonna make a bad offense good i really like jd mcdaniels i think he has the potential to be a really good offensive number three but his production just isn't quite there yet their bench has a couple players in alexander walker and monte morris that i feel are good players to hold up a bench unit but again not really floor raisers of a team's total offense and then there is nas reed who may be the best big coming off the bench in the league someone who would start for like 20 teams right now but he can't start on this one because of one carl anthony towns i've made my feelings on cat known i firmly believe he is the second most talented offensive big in the league probably third now that joel has learned how to pass to his teammates he's craftsman skilled milwaukee dewalt he has all the tools. He is a great passer for a big, good ball handler, good in the post, solidly athletic, and is easily the best shooting center in the league. No contest, no competition. And on top of that, this is, I think, his best defensive season so far. He should be, at worst, a top 15 player in the league and probably top 10. So why do I believe he will be the main reason the Timberwolves won't win a championship? That is because I believe Cat is the perfect synopsis of why the mental component is the most important facet of basketball. I'm no psychiatrist, so I won't speculate on the reasoning or the specific mental traits that goes into being a top 10 or even top 20 player in the league, but I will say that whatever those traits are, there is no way Cat has them. I am sorry. Just look at his playoff performances. Carl Anthony Towns is the weirdest playoff choker I think I've ever seen in my life. Because he's not explicitly bad offensively, sure he's not good, but I don't think he chokes the way James Harden does. I mean, just take yourself back to the play-in game last year. In that game, Anthony Edwards was the one who needed the Heimlich. That brother was gasping for breath, shooting an eye gouging, three of 17 from the field. And Cat responded by absolutely dicing up the Lakers defense to an alarming degree. Passing, shooting, driving, in the post, come here, let's go to work. In the first and third quarter, Cat was the best player on the court for either team. In the second quarter, fourth quarter, and overtime though, practically non-existent. And do you know why that is? Literal foul trouble. Carl Anthony Towns is not a playoff choker because he can't make his shots. He is a playoff choker because he literally can't keep his hands to himself. Carl Anthony Towns averages, averages, 
four editing sweatshop here no idea where I pulled the stat from I'm about to say 4.7 in the video but it's actually 3.8 no idea where I saw 4.7 it's 3.8 and if you exclude his rookie season which was eight ish years ago it's actually 4.2 still a very large amount but not 4.7 again no idea where I found that and also just so you know if you're not familiar with basketball you only need six to foul out so averaging 4.2 is kind of insane and honestly this type of choking may be worse than just straight up missing shots because there are so many more ramifications when you get in foul trouble you both consciously and subconsciously get less aggressive which makes you worse offensively and defensively you're on the court less minutes which is a big deal when you're a team's second best scorer on top of that you are literally spotting the other team points each game the timberwolves got to beat a team by 10 to beat them by four because you can already pencil in six free throws given up by cats dumb ass if this were a bench player or even your third best offensive player this wouldn't be a terrible issue draymond green been averaging an assault per week since the beginning of the warriors dynasty and they've still found a way to win four championships mainly because while draymond is very important to the warriors offense don't get me wrong you can still function pretty well with oh two to three of the greatest shooters of all time draymond is very important to the team but the warriors can handle a game or two without him offensively the timberwolves though are the 20th ranked offense in the league the timberwolves offensive talent is statistically and objectively speaking below average they need cat if they want to make a deep playoff run every other team in the west that can feasibly make the playoffs has at least one guy aside from their star player who can consistently create their own offense and help keep the team afloat if the star player misses a game or is just off can Minnesota really count on that from Cat though? When he's treating the defensive side of the ball like a vintage Hell in the Cell match? Can they really count on him to take the reins when teams are devoting two defenders to stopping Ant in the playoffs? While I am 100% open to and hoping I am proven wrong at this point, I just don't see how you can count on him. And the Timberwolves just don't have the personnel to pick up the rest of the slack. Don't get me wrong, I feel like any team that makes the playoffs in the West has a chance to make the NBA Finals. The West is truly Truly, truly wide open. Out of all those teams in that upper echelon though, the teams that are definitely going to be able to skip the play-in, the Minnesota Timberwolves is the one team that I have the most questions about. And that is almost solely due to one Carl Anthony Towns. What up sweatshoppers? Thank you so much for 1000 subscribers. It means the world to us. Your viewership means the world to us. When we originally started this channel, there was no way we thought we were going to reach 1000 subscribers so quickly and here we are and it's all because of y'all thank you so much and as a albeit small show of thanks we kind of wanted to give you guys the lowdown on what you can expect from this channel for the future first release schedule you guys can expect a video from us weekly usually on wednesday around 6 p.m central time we found through our few months of being on this platform that wednesday around that time seems to be the time where the most of you guys see the video the quickest so you guys can expect a video from us once a week every week 6 p.m central time on wednesday if not wednesday then it'll either be thursday or friday next the types of videos you can expect from us and really what you guys can expect is every type of basketball video a deep dive into a basketball concept player breakdown team breakdown a retrospective for a certain team in nba history the only thing we've decided to maybe not cut out but pull back on a little bit is our daily nba news reporting this is like like trade deadline stuff or free agent moves stuff of that nature the reason we wanted to pull off on that is because we found that those are our least favorite types of videos it's always a rush to get it out and in those videos we feel the least confident about our takes because we don't have a lot of time to research them maybe once we get our short form content up and running then that can be kind of the hub for our nba basketball reporting but other than that as far as long form content goes you can expect those types of videos to die down a little bit last couple things first we need a new name for this community we started by saying sweatshop employees because we wanted to keep this 
sweatshop motif and then someone eloquently put it on one of our community posts that that may be a little bit derogatory so we switched to sweatshoppers but that i don't know that just seems kind of basic so please let us know down below what we should call our community and lastly we're trying to figure out what we should do to set up the memberships on this channel why don't you guys just let us know down in the comments what you guys think would be fair to you guys and what you guys actually want out of the channel memberships what we were thinking is three to five dollars a month you get videos a couple days in advance and then ten dollars a month you get access to the sweatshop discord something of that nature this idea is still in the beta so please let us know down below what you guys think would be fair for you guys to pay and what you guys would like out of the channel membership because you know you guys are who are going to be paying for this type of stuff so let us know down below and yeah that's it as always stay sweaty ladies and gentlemen